Lee from Korea International School. We learn to share and I teach macroeconomics. So what we will have for lesson four today is price indices and inflation. And let's dig in. So the first thing that we need to know about is something called the CPI. It's an acronym for Consumer Price Index. So what is the CPI? Uh, we first need to know the definition of it, right? Uh, so what it really means is the measure of the average change over time in the prices paid by consumers for a fixed market basket. So it kind of indicates the purchasing power of an average family from America. And the formula for it is market basket in current year over market basket in base year multiplied by 100. In that way, you can find the value of the CPI. So if you're finding uh, the CPI of a year that doesn't have a base year, the base year has to be itself. So the term market basket was used in the definition of CPI, right? So it what it really means is the goods or services purchased by consumers from a typical American family, which can include food, housing, education, etc. So changes in CPI. So Inflation can be indicated when the CPI increases. So the overall increase in price means inflation. So it kind of decreases the purchasing power of a given income. So on the other hand, deflation happens when CPI decreases. It's when the, when the overall price decreases, which increases the purchasing power of a given income. So how can we find the inflation rate? So the inflation rate is the new CPI subtracted by old CPI as a whole uh, divided by old CPI multiplied by 100. So there's a practice problem that we can do. So let's say that the 2019 CPI is 100 and the 2020 CPI is 110. Uh, the inflation rate can be 110 uh, subtracted by 100 then divided by 100 and multiplied by 100. So here, the 110 is the CPI of 2020, 100 here is the CPI of 2019, here goes the same, and this is just the part of the formula. So it's 10 divided by 100 multiplied by 100, which results in 10% of inflation rate. So the second topic that we will cover today is nominal versus real. So nominal is referring to variables that have not been adjusted for inflation. So the first factor may be nominal income. It's like wages and salary that does not consider inflation. The GDP, uh, nominal GDP, is measured in current dollars without considering inflation. Uh, the nominal interest rate is uh, it's before taking inflation into account. So real is referring to variables that have been adjusted for inflation. So real income measures a person's purchasing power, not the literal income. And the real GDP is measured in inflation adjusted dollars and real interest rates take inflation into account. So how do you find a real value by using nominal value and the price index? The formula for real value is nominal value over price index divided by 100. So let's say that the 2000, the nominal salary of 2000 is 65,000 and the nominal salary of 2010 is 75,000. And the CPI of 2000 is 172.2. The CPI of 2010 is 218.1. So then we can say that the real salary of 2000 is 65,000 divided by 1.722, which results in 3746.81, and that can be applied to the real salary of 2010. So today's lesson is over. We, we covered what CPI is, the definition of very associated uh, market, uh, vocabularies like market basket, inflation, deflation, and we learned about the difference between nominal and real values. Thank you for watching. Thank you.